This video is for people who have bad organization, people who have procrastinated heavily, and people who haven't been putting in the work throughout the whole year. How do you cram A-level maths in the last minute? I can't lie to you. This is a very, very sticky situation but there is something you can do. I won't focus on motivating you in this video. I'm just gonna share with you the know-how of cramming maths and how I would do it. The whole year fam, you should have tried harder when it came to understanding the concepts because you had time on your side. For example, knowing the basic formulae, understanding what methods to use for a particular question and just understanding what the question is asking you to do. I've published this video on the 25th of April, which means it's at least a month before your first maths exam. So I want you to use this time now to cover as much content as possible. And I think an effective way to learn all this material in such a short period of time is to create a one page summary sheet of each topic, right? and list down all the relevant formulae that you need to know and sort of a typical question that comes along with it. You can use flashcards as well and I would heavily advise you reviewing this on a daily basis. I'd also use online resources because you can't fully rely on your friends or teachers all the time. What I used was exam solutions but you can use whatever you like. I'd also do textbook questions so that you're applying what you've put on your summary sheets and it's not just lingering about. If you're really doing this last minute, and I mean last minute, I mean two weeks before exam, one week before exam, then I would completely skip this step. And that leads me on to the second tip, which is practice. The first step was to understand the concepts, to make your summary sheets. The second step is to practice. As I said, the textbook questions is your first starting point. What this means for you as well is you need to go to school and print off the past five to seven years worth of past papers and just blitz through them, memorize the methods and try your best to understand how to get to the answer. When taking that approach of memorizing the methods and just trying to understand how to get to the answer, well, this should increase your chances of passing. You probably won't understand anything, but at least if that question pops up in the exam, you'll be ready for it. Also when doing past papers, um, it's also important to consider how the questions are worded because it's most, like, most likely what's gonna happen in the real exam is that they're gonna switch up the wording by a bit and that's gonna throw off a lot of people but essentially it's just the same steps of what you've done in a previous past paper question. In addition to your summary sheets of formulae, right? I would recommend creating a summary sheet of the silly mistakes that you make so that you're aware of them and you're least likely to make those mistakes again in the real thing. For example, for me, I was very self-aware that I tend to, you know, when I'm skipping steps or when I start multiplying across or collecting like terms, I just add and multiply incorrectly just because I'm under that pressure. You know, I know how to do it, but it's that pressure that really gets to me. So. I was aware of that, so every time I'd do the papers, my papers, right, I'd remember to be calm, you know, keep my composure, and literally, that, that was it for me. Now I want to give you three tips to help you study, and the first one is prioritize. I can't tell you exactly, but you need to have a balance between learning the material, like understanding the concepts, and spending time actually doing the questions. Note that in the real thing, the goal is to answer those hard exam style questions. So if creating the summary sheet will help you do that, then create the summary sheet. But if you're running out of time and stuff, um, or you feel like you're pretty confident with the summary sheet, then do the questions. Or maybe you're the type of person to do the questions, right? And then learn as you go. Like, it really depends. So know how to prioritize. My second tip is to do one hour of maths revision every single day from here on out. One of the biggest differences between an A grade student and a U grade student is how much time they've spent revising throughout the whole year. But unfortunately, time isn't by your side because you know, you flopped, you, you, you messed up throughout the whole year, right? So you wanna maximize it now. Obviously, don't force yourself to do one hour revision every day. I'm just saying that because you want to, I don't want any excuses, you know, it's exam season. You want to be maximizing as much time as you can. 
and you want to not also neglect your other subjects so although I say like one hour of maths revision every day if you feel like you need to prioritize another subject then you should do that because after all we need grades across the board and my third tip is to take a break which is kind of a contrast to what I just said um, in the previous tip but you know I know cramming right it takes a lot of physical energy and it takes a lot of mental energy like I know how exhausting cramming can be and it can actually make you sleep deprived and makes you unfocused and you know you know the drill think about it this way imagine you had your school hours on a Saturday and a Sunday so that's six hours that's all of one hour of lunch and breaks and five hours of studying right imagine you spent half of that time doing what it is you need to do and then the other half of that time relaxing and that's your break you see how much time you actually have in the weekends to actually put in the work but also use that time to take a break the point of taking a break is to avoid burnout and here's how you know you need to take a break if you feel like the physical and mental act of just sitting down and revising right is harmful to you or you're just flipping out right then take a break but if you're somebody who's just can't be bothered and really you know you can put in a bit more effort then you need to continue revising you do not need a break maybe you just need uh a little bit of momentum so rather than just force yourself to do one hour of studying just focus on like just focus for 20 minutes you know and then ease your way through sometimes people just give up too easily without realizing that they can actually push forward and actually do a little more revision that they think they can do couldn't do one of the two <laughs> cramming isn't the best option but for some people it's just the only option and you know it is what it is I know you probably understand like the consequences already because I don't know why you didn't revise throughout the whole year but you know what let's just try and make the best out of a sticky situation you know you know it is what it is and I hope this video can give you some perspective and just give you a little more confidence that you can do more revision you know your exams will be finished after you've sat the exam so up until that point you should be putting in that work putting in that, that discipline and that consistency and you know it really does make a difference I've seen people who have crammed and actually increased their grades by like one or two you know depending on who you are all there is left to say now is all the best with your vision and yeah man good luck good luck safe